Okay, so now that you have your 12 rows of your color change, we're going to start on the leveling row. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the row level so that it's going to end up being a straight row. And so I'm just going to go ahead. I already started my chain and my color change over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn. I'm going to, and again, make sure that you are crocheting your ends into the piece. So the first is chain one and then single crochet. And I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Okay, and then after that, you're going to do one half double crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to do two double crochets in the next two stitches. Okay, and then you're going to do half double crochet again. And you're going to do three more single crochets. Okay, and then you're going to skip these top two stitches right here. And you're just going to go into the next stitch. So skip two, and then single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to do two more single crochet. And then you're going to go back to doing a half double crochet and then two double crochets over the next two stitches. And then one half double crochet and then three single crochet. And then just following the pattern, we're going to skip those two top stitches and do another three single crochet over the next three stitches. Now we're going to do a half double crochet. And I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, so we are back at the beginning. And as you can see, this is all leveled out, so it's just straight instead of wavy. And now we're going to start single doing a single crochet together to get this to scrunch up so that it becomes that sort of bell shape. So you're gonna go ahead and chain one and then one single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to single crochet together. So we're gonna go ahead and crochet together. And then you're going to do another single crochet. And then you're going to do that all the way till the end. So do another single crochet together. Do another single crochet. Another single crochet together. Okay, and so you're just going to do that all the way until the end, and then you're going to do this over the next three rows. So for rows 27 to 29, you're going to be single crocheting and single crocheting together, and um, I will meet you back at the end of row 29. So after three rows of single crochet and single crochet together. Okay, so now you can see that it's going to scrunch up a little bit after those three rows of single crochet together. It's going to look more bell shaped. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do five rows of single crochet back and forth. So for rows 30 to 34, you're going to do five rows of single crochet. So I'll meet you back at the end of that to show you what that's going to look like. Once you have those five rows, we're going to go ahead and start decreasing again. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one. And I'm going to single crochet into that stitch. Then I'm going to single crochet together. 
You're gonna single crochet again. You're gonna single crochet together. So single crochet again. You're gonna single crochet together. And at the end of this row, you should have six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you don't have six stitches, um, you can go back and see like at what decrease point you ended up with not the right amount of stitches. So it's just about going back and fixing your mistake. Or you could always decrease as you're going across. Um, there are different ways to fix crochet mistakes and then also just let them be design elements in your own personal work. So after that row, we're going to go ahead and chain one again. And then we're going to single crochet in that stitch. And we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to single crochet together. And we're going to single crochet again. Okay, so now that you're at so now that you're at this point, you're going to keep on single crocheting across until your work measures about six inches from the point of the color change to the end. And you can always make this shorter if you want your loop to be smaller, or you can always make it longer if you want your loop to be longer. But the pattern suggests six inches, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back wherever I'm done with the six inches. So once you have six inches starting from the beginning of your color change to the end, it's time to make your buttonhole. You're going to chain one and then you're going to turn and single crochet into that spot. Okay, and then you're going to do another single crochet into the next chain. And then you're going to chain two and skip the first stitch. And you're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, and then moving on to the next row, you're going to chain one, turn, single crochet in that first stitch, skip the next stitch, and you're going to three single crochet into the chain two loop that you just made. And you're going to skip the next stitch, and you're going to single crochet into the last stitch. And for the last row, you're going to chain one, skip the first stitch, five double crochets, and the next stitch, which is the third stitch. So one, two, three. So at the top of the chain, you're going to do the five double crochets. Four and then five. And then you're going to slip stitch into the last stitch and then fasten off. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my trusty scissors, which are right here. Go ahead and give that a snip. I don't really like to leave a long tail whenever I'm finishing up a project because I don't have the patience to weave in a lot of ends. So I leave about like an inch or two, an inch and a half. And then instead of using a needle to weave in ends, I just go in with my crochet hook because since I do have such a short tail, it's hard to use a needle to weave all the ends in. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this hook to kind of pull it in back and forth. And also, long tails also contribute to yarn being wasted, which I suppose it doesn't matter too much if it's like a four inch tail. But at the same time, I like to get the most use out of my yarn that I can. So I like shorter tails for that reason. And once I'm weaving it in for a couple of rows, I'm just going to go ahead and snip off the end right here. I'm 
Okay. And so there you have it. There is your Tish towel. And the pattern does say that you can go and slip stitch around the edge of the piece so you get a clear edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And whenever you decide to do this, pick the side that you want facing forward. Um, some sides might have a couple of yarns in sticking out from whenever you're weaving in the end. You might want to hide that side and then have the cleaner side facing. And that's the side you're going to want to do the slip switch on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just so I have a cleaner finish. I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn and going to join it to the edge right here, right where the red starts. And it might be a little bit hard to get it in at first because it's tight from all the color changing. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn. And like I said, I don't like using a long tail, so I'm going to use a shorter tail. I'm just going to pull up a loop through that stitch like that. And I'm going to chain one just to secure it, but that's the only chaining I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be slip stitching the rest of the way there. So, go ahead and slip stitch. All the way through. And I'm trying to also slip stitch the tail into it too so that that kind of gets worked into the piece so I don't have to go back and weave it in. As you can tell, I take every measure I can to not weave in in the end because that's my least favorite part of any project and I just want to avoid it as much as I can. So, that's what I do. It also makes it easier at the end of a project whenever you really don't want to go back and redo stuff, especially if it's a longer project. So I'm continuing to just slip stitch. And like I was saying before, you want to make sure that the side that is going to be facing people or facing forward is the one you're doing the slip stitches on. Because as you can tell, sorry, as you can tell, the slip stitches are showing on this side, but they're not showing on the reverse side. You can always do a single crochet into a slip stitch and it'll look clean on both sides. But of course, that takes more yarn, so it's really up to you as to what kind of finishing you want to do. You could also try to go around the whole edge of the dishcloth with a finishing stitch. I don't really recommend doing that with a pattern like this because it's kind of difficult to get an even color change whenever you're um, crocheting into the edge of different colors. And so it might end up looking a little bit sloppier. So I just recommend doing it for the top part wherever you have the solid color. Okay, so once you've done all of your slip stitches around the front side, this is what it's going to look like. As you can tell, it's a lot cleaner than whenever we first started. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten off at that edge too. Go ahead and pull that tight. Just going to work that back in. Okay. And you're going to want to go back and make sure that you have woven in all of your other ends. Okay. And so now for the final touch is the button. And the button is, you're going to want to go ahead and fold your piece over so you can determine where your button is going to go. I'm going to plan on placing it uh, right about where we start doing our first row of single crochet instead of decreases uh, whenever we start decreasing at the top here. So, as I mentioned before, I am not going to be using, so as I mentioned before, I'm not going to be using thread and a needle to put this button on just because I do not have the patience for that. And so what I'm going to show you instead is how you can use uh, glue to get this to go. Let's see, find a good button here. 
Always make sure that your button is going to work. Okay. So I'm going to take my button and I'm going to take my E6000. And the reason why you want to use E6000 as opposed to hot glue is because E6000 is actually made for this kind of material. And it's, uh, it'll last a lot longer. Like you will be able to throw this in a washing machine and you won't have any issues with the button coming off. But hot glue, you have to look out for that a little bit more. But you have to be careful with E6000 because it comes out quickly and you have to work quickly with it. And it does have to sit for 24 hours before it's completely dry. But once it's completely dry, whatever you glue down isn't going anywhere. Okay, so once you have the E6000 taken up, you're gonna go. You're just gonna give it a little squeeze, nothing too much, because we we don't want too much glue going on here. And then you're just gonna put it right in the center. You don't want to spread it out too much because you still want to be able to get your button through that loop. So, like I said, right in the middle, right where we first starting start doing our regular single crochet. I'm just gonna push down on that. I'm going to use the cap to do it so I don't get too much glue on my fingers. Okay, and then that's just going to sit and dry. And then once it's dry, you'll be able to hang it on top of your rod in your kitchen. And it's just a great little gift and it works up really quickly. So it's great for last minute Christmas ideas. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was helpful to you. And if you have any ideas on any other patterns that you like help with, let me know. Thank you and have a great day.